Okay, well, here we are. <laughs> I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to start this off. So, welcome, welcome to to uh, episode two hundred. Okay, I was gonna do. I had so many plans for this episode, and then it all fell through. But you didn't know that, so it's all okay. So this is the two hundredth episode on this vlog. Uh, I started. I don't even remember what the first episode was. One second. So I uploaded my very first vlog on April 21st, 2016, and since then have recorded, edited, exported, published 200 episodes, in addition to a handful of other one-off episodes and, and a few other things. Feels good, feels really good. And some things haven't changed in that it's the Sunday that this video is supposed to go out and I'm now filming it. For this episode, I wanted to answer a bunch of questions that I have, uh, have received over the last uh, year, year and a half, uh, it's been almost it's been almost three years, but I, I wanted to kind of kind of consolidate them all. So I I asked on the last couple of videos and made a post and a tweet and all of these things that apparently you're supposed to do, and asked if anybody had questions for me to answer, whether it was about moving to Ireland or vlogging or family, and hey, wouldn't you know, those were the number one uh, answered asked questions. So in today's video. I'm gonna be answering questions received from you and, and hopefully shine a light a little bit on, I don't know, answers to the questions that you asked. So let's just jump right into it. So very first question, Paige asks, what is the number one thing you miss about the US? Food you miss, food you miss? Food you miss? Number one thing I miss about the US is uh, the people. Well, well, no, that's actually, well, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna get me in trouble. So I would say the people, but I think more importantly than the people, um, and this is becoming less true the closer I get to people here. Uh, when I first moved, when you first move out of your context, right, you, you, you move to another city or another country or another planet, you sacrifice this being knownness. And when I first moved here, I, I, was, I didn't feel known by anybody. You know, I, I didn't have any level of a name for myself. Not that that part is important, but um, you know, there, was, there were people here who knew, who knew me but I didn't feel known. So I would say that that was the thing that, that I felt that I missed the most. That's becoming less true the longer I live here. Food that I miss, burritos. <laughs> like really good Mexican food. I, yeah, in, in California, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there were too many like authentic Mexican places, um, but there was one place where I lived called Garcia's that was just like, oh, I miss Garcia's. They don't really do that stuff here very well. Peter asks, hey Corey, you work from home. Has this made it more difficult to make Irish friends? I notice a lot of your friends aren't Irish. So interesting question, Peter. So there's two answers, there's two parts to this question. Yes and no. So actually many of my friends kind of live around the world and we connect online because a big part of my, my job and um, the organization that we work with is we're kind of scattered out into the world. So I've, I've learned to make friends not just locally, but also, you know, online. Um, now that being said, when you work from home, you don't have a lot of, you don't, you don't have a lot of kind of forced interaction with people. You have to make that a priority. You have to kind of get out there and, and get into the world and, and talk with people. And so, so yeah, kind of yes and no. Um, I do have, I do have friends though, and I do have Irish friends. And, and this is, I think somebody else asked this question about like being friends with Irish natives. And the, the answer to that is I don't film every part of my life. So everything that's on the channel, everything that's on the vlog, that isn't a whole, that isn't the whole picture. I do have Irish friends that we hang out with. In fact, we had some Irish friends over a week and a half ago or so for the Irish toy show and <laughs> Irish toy, what? No, <laughs> the late, late toy show. I'm going to, I'm done. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ireland. I have a very small circle of friends though, like local friends. I, I try to keep it pretty small because you can only give out so much energy to so many people, but you, you do, when you work from home, you do have to make sure that you are actually making a priority to interact with people for sure, like in real life, which is very important. Okay, so now we get to the part where <laughs> a lot of people, and not even just for this video, but a lot of people over the last months and months and months have asked the question, how do I move to Ireland? How, how do you have any tips for moving to Ireland? You're an American, you move to Ireland, how does that work? I think the number one or number two search result that brings people to my channel is how do you move to Ireland? 
And so I was thinking about this, I was like, oh no, but I, I can't make a video called How Do You Move to Ireland because it's so, it's so complex. But I'm gonna give it a stab at some of these questions. So Paige, uh, Paige again asks, I want to move to Ireland. What are some tips you could give me? And another question, how are you able to immigrate to Ireland? My wife and I have been looking to move to Ireland. So here's, so the biggest question people ask is, can anyone move to Ireland? How do I move to Ireland in, in all of that? And the answer to the question, can anyone move to Ireland, is unfortunately no. And and I'm sorry, that's just kind of the truth. You, you, it's like many other countries, you can't just move there and settle. There has to be, there has to be a reason for you coming here. If you're, especially if you're not Irish or you don't have, uh, you know, Irish roots or not even just roots, but I think there's, I think it might be grandparentage or whatever. Uh, or if you're maybe an EU citizen, you may be able to move. Also, disclaimer, I'm not an immigration lawyer or uh, an expert in any of these things. This is just our experience. We work with a, a Christian organization here in Europe. And so our visa is based on our our work with our organization. So um, I, I have a day job, but we also do this work with, uh, with TCKs, with third culture kids. So our visa to live in Ireland is predicated on our connection with this organization, with the church here. Um, I mean, there's there's letters, there's legalities, there's uh, you know what type of visa. There's there's all sorts of stuff, and for the most part, you have to have no, not even just for the most part. You have to have some sort of reason for coming and even staying in this country. So the number one piece of advice that I can give to anybody wondering if you have the ability to move to Ireland is to go to INIS, I think it's .gov.ie or .ie.gov. I'll put it on, it'll be on the screen. It's somewhere there. So go to INIS, that's the Irish Naturalization Immigration Service. On this website, you're gonna be able to find types of visas that you can apply for, whether it's a, a work visa. You know, some people move here because they get a job here and then the job supplies them with a visa and they do all that work. So you have to have some sort of a reason, whether you're a, a volunteer worker or you're a, a, a doctor or you're working or there's just a lot of things like that. So you have to look at the, the, the visa options there or the immigration options there. Uh, another thing that I did and that we did is that we worked with people who had done it before in our same field. So what I would say is find the kind of visa that you're looking for or find the kind of option that you're looking for and, and see if that applies to you. It's, it's not really, as far as I know, it's not possible just to say, I want to retire in X country and then you just kind of go there. You have to have a reason. Uh, the last few years, immigration here has been changing a lot. Laws have been like molding and evolving and, and we've had issues even with our you know, our uh, ability to stay here and our, our reasonings and all of that. So it is just very complicated. And, and I wish I could say, hey, anybody can move here. It's just not, it's just not the case. Uh, it's probably the same in your country where people can't just show up and live there, uh, at least not legally. So you have to look into, I would say, look into INIS, c call your local or your state or country or whatever Irish embassy see if they have any information. If you get somebody on the phone, that's really good. Uh, so that would be my absolute number one tip because everything other than that is all very circumstantial. You know, even people who are in our field or are in our field of work, they, we all have different experiences. We all, we all have had different encounters with immigration. And so there's just no one way to do it. If you're not going with an organization, if you're not receiving sponsorship, if you're not going with work, just understand that it's probably not in your favor, unfortunately, but go ahead and look at that website, scour the website, do some Google searches for what you're trying to do. And don't just say moving, moving to Ireland, because if you just try to move to Ireland, it's just not, it's just not going to work. So yeah, I hope that answers that question. I know I've gotten that a lot I, and I, and I wish there was a better answer to that question. I really, really do. I hope that helps. It's not really, it's not really yay, happy fun, but that would be my, my first piece of, my main piece of advice. Moving right along. Uh, this is a really, really long question. As someone who's, uh, Ian asks, as someone who is moving with my family to Dublin in seven months, my biggest concern is paying off some of our bills in the US when we go. I know that if we were moving to the UK, we could use banks that are both there and in the US, which would make transferring money easier. But from what I can see, there aren't any banks 
Irish banks that exist in the US or vice versa. I wanna know if you had any similar situations. Yeah, okay, so financially speaking, we have a bank in America that we use and we have a bank in Ireland that we use. So we get paid in the US and then we transfer the money to our Irish bank. That's just kind of how we do it. So. Other people may do it other ways. I know that there are online services that you can get paid and there's it's like an online bank um, But I don't think there are any Ir Irish banks here that are in the States. So uh, many people either use uh, Like a, a credit union or something like that or they use a, a bank that does international transfers Or like, you know, you can have you can use your card internationally and so that's that's what I would recommend, or at least that's what I that's what we do. So hopefully that's helpful. We have an uh, an American bank that we can pay American bills with, you know, because we still have stuff going out of that bank that we're managing. Uh, but then we use Transferwise, which is a great service that I'm not sponsored by, but I just love it. Um, and so we use that to to move the money over every month or every every uh, a few times a month, and then we have it in the uh, in the Irish bank. Derek asks, uh, I love your channel, chap. Thanks, chap. I'm sure Ireland has been amazing thus far. I was wondering who you used to ship your goods overseas. I have no idea. It was with our, our organization, set it up, they were connected with somebody. I showed up, I gave them our boxes, showed up on the other side and got our boxes. I really don't know. I probably should know that. Uh, Ashley asks, congrats on the 200th episode. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, I've been watching your videos for quite some time and really enjoy them. I was curious how hard it is to find or apply for housing in Ireland. Also, what advice would you give to someone moving to Ireland? Advice earlier. Secondly, housing is tough here. Housing is, housing is in a rough place. The, the housing market, they're, they're building a lot, but there's also a lot of unused places. Rent is going up. It's tough. Uh, you have to look a lot. In fact, the biggest piece of advice that I have for moving to Ireland, if you're going to move to Ireland, is to visit Ireland before you move. Uh, on, a regular, on a regular stay, I think you can have a 90-day stamp if you just show up, and just like a tourist stamp. And that was uh, something that we did in 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we moved in 2000, we came over in 2015. We were here for two and a half months, I think. And it allowed us to kind of explore around and see what were what was available in different places. And not like look at houses, but kind of look at areas, see what we liked, see what we didn't like, see what we didn't like. And so that was a huge benefit because then when we came over, we knew what places we wanted to look up. Uh, we knew what areas we wanted to look at. In certain cases, if your budget is a certain amount, then you're only gonna be able to look in certain places uh, around the city. Obviously, it's less expensive out, out of the city, but I only know Dublin for the most part. I uh, highly recommend the website Daft, daft.ie, and it changes all the time. Um, but this that's kind of the main hub for uh, for renting and for selling and house, housing and things like that. You have to you have to be here in person to look at the house. Barely anybody is going to to be like, oh yeah, we'll uh, we'll totally rent you the house and we've only met over email. So you're going to have to be here and look around. So I know people have moved and stayed with friends or in an Airbnb or something like that until they found a house or found a place to rent or whatever. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, it turns around really, really quickly. So you have to check daily, if not multiple times a day. The place that we're in, it went up, I think Saturday morning. We went for a viewing on Sunday and then we got it on Tuesday, I think. Or we were uh, we were uh, told that we got it on Tuesday. So that's literally, what, four days, three days? That And it just turns around like that constantly because people are looking for places and moving and all sorts of stuff. So that's, uh, there's some advice for that. Okay, let's see, uh, congrats, Amanda asks, congrats on 200. When you and Kay decided to move to Ireland, were you concerned about losing your network of any family? Uh, I was concerned about losing my network with my family, especially when we moved, we were living close to my family, uh, at least a, a portion of my family. And, uh, and that, was, that was hard, absolutely. When you get to a place where, where it feels less doable to visit family, it's very impactful. It can kind of mess with you, but, uh, when we moved here, I actually found that I grew closer to my siblings. We started up a, a group WhatsApp chat and and we have uh, the app Marco Polo that we communicate on and we talk back and forth and kind of see what's going on in each other's lives. We're all kind of scattered throughout you know the world right now 
Um, so I'm I'm very thankful for the for apps and and things and the internet for allowing us to be able to connect like that for sure. Christiana's parents live in Austria, so that wasn't a big enough a big of as big of a leap. And in fact, we've probably seen them more now being here. So the connection between you and another person is uh, is as much as you put effort into it. So there have been people who, when I moved, they stopped putting effort into our relationship, and I'm not as close with them anymore. There's uh, there's a lot of adjustment. The first year here was was really tough for me, but coming out the other side, it's it's been I would say I have a much better relationship with the the members of my family than I did even when I lived there near them. Super ironic. Oh, okay. So that so that's, that's there's been a lot of questions about Ireland, but also I've been getting some questions about vlogging. Uh, Hunt wisely asks, I think it would be interesting to ask each member of your family what effect the vlog has had on them. Oh, but that means you have to get up and go ask them. Rachel asks, what have you enjoyed most about vlogging and how did you first get into it? That is a really great question. The thing I enjoy most about vlogging is, is being able to look back and see what I've made and, and see kind of our history as a family. You know, even recently our friend Melissa was here and I was just kind of digging back in the archives and I was able to find footage that I thought had totally been lost of when Melody was born and Rylan met Melody for the very first time. And being able to look back at those early days and seeing some of the early videos of Mel just kind of lying there going, uh, uh, you know, and then now seeing her downstairs running around with pigtails and say, oh, good idea, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's magical. It's really magical being able to, to see the progression of, of my family over the years, you know, to see my first year here, which was full of anxiety and stress and depression and and be able to look at that and see how different I looked and and how our family pulled through that, you know? So uh, I would say that's the, the the thing that I love the most about vlogging is being able to, to kind of go back in time and relive those moments. One of the videos that I've watched the most is the video where I say goodbye to my family before we get on the plane to, to move here. There are just just those moments like that. And then there are so many, there are so many in between that, that I, that I don't capture because those are for, you know, those are for just for me. Um, but, but I really like being able to, it's, it just feels like a time capsule of sorts. I love that. How did you first get into it? <laughs> so first got into it. I don't remember, honestly, I think, I think I, came, I went to my wife, we, we were in Canada and I went to Christiana and I was like, wouldn't it be awesome if I could just vlog for a living. I, I said that and obviously I don't vlog for a living, but I said something like that and I was like, oh, I'm really thinking about this. I really wanted, I was thinking about creating content and, and getting my name out there. It was much more selfish at that, at that point, I think. But I remember just having this harebrained idea of what if I had a vlog and I was starting a, I wanted to start a podcast around that time. I was thinking about doing some online teaching. And so I wanted to build trust with the people that were going to be possibly purchasing my products or listening to my show or whatever. And, uh, and so I, it started there and then I vlogged daily for, I think 77 days and then decided that that was nuts and switched to weekly. Uh, but then from that point, it just kind of, it got baked into my day or into my week at least. Yeah, it got baked into the week and it just kind of became something that I did. Uh, it started off me wanting to, to, to have my face out there and, and be trusted by people. And now it's something that I do because I want to make stuff. I want to make, I want to make videos. I want to, I want to, I want to create, I want to have something that I create every week. And now it's just something I do. Turn, turn. Steven asks, Hey buddy. Steven asks, what are you hoping to do slash see slash achieve in year three in Ireland? Oof. Year three. I want to go up to the most northern point of the island. I've never been there. There's like a most northernest, most, most northernest point. I think I've been to the most southernest point, but I've not been to the most northernest point. I want to see that. Something I want to achieve, do or achieve. Maybe run a race. Is that crazy? <laughs> I've, I've thought about it. maybe like a 10K or, or a 5K or a 2K. I don't know. That, that might be that might be fun to do something to do something communal. I, you know, I think I, maybe that's what it is. I want to do something that's that's communal, Irishy, Dubliny, something that everybody is doing. So if it's a run or something like that, I think I would like to be part of something like that. There was a world record skinny dip last year, but it was women only, so I couldn't go to it, <laughs> obviously. But uh, I don't know. So 
I was gonna say something like that, but you know, you know, you know what? I, cut that out. My tea is probably super cold right now. Bad. Lady Shadow seventy nine says I've been following you for over a year. I truly appreciate you, your family, and your videos. Lady Shadow seventy nine. I appreciate you. Uh, my questions would be, what inspires you to create? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now or 20 even? Oof. What, ins what inspires you to create? To be honest, I don't know that I create often out of inspiration. I create out of the need to create. You know, I, I, I sat down a couple of weeks ago and I was not feeling inspired, but I wanted to make music. I wanted to write music. I wanted to record it. I wanted to have some music that I had made because it had been a while. I was not feeling inspired at all. And so I just sat down and I just worked at it and I cranked out some riffs and they were terrible. And I wrote out some beats and they were awful. And then, and then some things started to come together and I made the first part of a song in a weekend. And it, it, it had nothing to do with inspiration. It, it had to do with me sitting down and actually making something. And I often feel uninspired to even make this vlog, like total transparency. I feel very uninspired. Off, more often than I'd like to admit, but I just need to because I have to because it's Sunday and that's when the vlog goes out and I have to make something. I've got to sit. I've got to, I have to do something with my hands. So uh, cr creating comes from, it comes from the sitting and the doing uh, or the standing and the doing, depending on what it is. And um, I, f I find that dependence on inspiration is a recipe for disaster because there's going to be times where you have to create and you're not inspired, but you have to. So depending on inspiration for creation is not what I would recommend. I would say, uh, planning for creation is actually the way that you, the way that you make, the way that you make things, uh, wearing the shirt it says create every day. And it's, I think that that's brilliant because that's, that doesn't give you an excuse. It gives you, a practical mindset of, I need to make something today. I need to draw something. That's what I love. One of the things I love about Ryland and Melody is that they want to draw every single day. And it's not because they have to or that they're inspired. They just want to draw mermaids and circles and things. You know, mermaids are big right now. My inspiration is from the creating part and, and, and knowing what I've made in the past, you know, looking at the things that I've made and, and designed or edited and released and and I look at that and I say, you know what? I can do that. I can keep doing that and I can get better. And then I just sit and do it. So I hope that answers your question. This video is gonna be so long. I'm so sorry. You seem to socialize a lot with other immigrants. What has been your experience with the natives? Easy to approach, distrust outsiders. Do the girls have native friends? How are, the ha how are you going to handle schooling over there? 72 questions here, dude. Rapid fire. What has been your experience with the natives? They're great, easy to approach, probably the easiest in the world. Doesn't necessarily mean that they trust you right away or that you're really, really close, but everyone here is remarkably kind. Do they distrust outsiders? The, that's a very generalized question, so I can't say that that's the case for everybody. Uh, they're a very, it's a very, it's an insider culture. So when you're in, you're in, but it might take a while to get in. Uh, it's been said that it might take you 10 to 15 years to, to really become part of your local community. I don't know if that's, actually the case, but yep. Do the girls have native friends? Yes. How are you gonna handle schooling over there? They're gonna school. Wine and rum, what a username. How have you made most of your friends in Ireland? What tips do you suggest? I would say that the way that you make friends in Ireland is the way that you make friends in general, which is to find ways and uh, find ways to interact with people in a co with a common experience. So whether that's, uh, for me, a lot of my friends are go to my church. So um, that's the way I interact with a lot of people. Um, I also have friends that I've connected with through our organization uh, or have been connection points through other people. We've done, you know, weekends away or we've gone, I don't know, go, you go to the pub or you go to a game night or, or whatever. You, you find common experiences that you like to do and then you interact with people doing the things that you all, that you like to do. Uh, Graham's one of my friends, he's Irish. He and I met at uh, Creative Mornings in 2015, and we just met, we kind of hit it off, realized that we had a mutual friend. R okay, random, but we realized we had a mutual friend, Mark, who's been in these videos sometimes, and 
and Mark had, I'd met Mark in 2011. And so there was like this connection point, but we were both doing this kind of, we were at this creative mornings thing where it was like for designers and stuff. So it's, it's just the same. You find, you find people and opportunities where you enjoy a, an activity or a, or a theme or whatever, whatever the context is. And you meet the people who, who are also in that context. And that's kind of like a short stop version of it, but it's, it's the same, you know, you make friends, you make friends around the world, I would say in, in very similar ways. So Andrew Fleming says, first time commenting. Thanks, Andrew. You're great. I appreciate you. What other countries in Europe were you considering moving to before you came? And do you now think Ireland was the best choice? We were considering Germany. We were considering maybe Austria. We were considering France. Uh, we were considering uh, England and Ireland. And I think there might, I think that was it. Uh, there were a couple of others and those weren't really as much as Ireland uh, and I do think that Ireland was the best choice because it's great Do you intend to stay for the short medium or long term? I would love to stay here for the long term. I'd love to live here uh, It depends on our visa. It depends on immigration law It depends on if after a number of years we want to apply for citizenship or long-term residency uh, But I would love to stay here. Absolutely long term Martin asks or says my wife and I are expecting our first child in April. Congratulations Dude, That's so exciting what was your first aha moment for you when you realized how to be a good parent? <laughs> what helped you transition into parenthood? Oh, well, what helped me transition into parenthood was having a child. Uh, <laughs> that, that was a moment. I'm only laughing because good parenting is, is very subjective. And, and this was something that I learned really early on when we found out that we were having a kid because I wanted to know how to be a good parent. So I read all the blogs, I read all the books, I talked with all the people. And the thing that I found out was everybody has a different thought. Everybody has a different way of doing it. You, you know, you've got people who are like, don't spank your kids. You should absolutely spank your kids. Don't send your kids to public school. You should absolutely send your kids to public school. Don't vaccinate, vaccinate. Don't co-sleep, co-sleep. Like you just have all these, don't, don't let your kid wear cotton. Let your kid run naked. Like it's, there's, <laughs> there's like a million times, a million different ways to be a parent. And, and so when I, the biggest piece of knowledge, I don't remember if this was dropped on me or if I just kind of realized this was the, the best way to be the best kind of parent, I think is to be your child's greatest expert, to be, to be a student of your child, to, to watch, to learn, to, to try and get some kind of a grasp on this person. Because you can read all of the books, you know? We we tried, you know, one of the stories we like to laugh about is early on we we read this book that everyone had been recommending. Oh, you gotta read Baby Wise. Baby Wise, it saved my life. And the kids were sleeping by like, they were a fetus and they were sleeping through the night and all of this stuff. And we tried it and part of the Baby Wise method, at least at the time, I don't know if it's changed, but it was like you put your kid down and you let him cry and you might go and say hi for a second and then they'll cry and everything. And so we tried that with Rylan and about two minutes into her screaming her face off in the other room, we were like, nah, nah. And we just chucked the book because, because we had to listen to our own instincts. We had, to li we had to listen to what we wanted to communicate with our daughter. And we didn't want to communicate to her that she was in need and we weren't there for her. Now, maybe that's overgeneralizing and I don't know the science, I don't know if there's whatever, but it's that's the most important thing. And in fact, Rylan now will, if she's having a bad dream at night, she knows that we'll come and we'll be there for her. Later on down the line, we were like, you know what, we're so tired and you just need to lie down, go be in the other room. And she would scream and scream, we'd be in the other room just going like, you know what, it's not gonna kill her to lie there and scream, it's fine. So we just had to kind of, we had to understand more about who Ryland was and who Melody was. And I don't know that you can always read that stuff out of a book. You, it, a lot of it just comes from, I mean, you can learn kind of the basics of, okay, feed your kid and you know, if they have got a rash, do this, or here's how to check for things, you know, it's, I mean, you can absolutely learn those sorts of things, but, but that would be the biggest piece of advice for, for being a parent is, become the greatest student of your child, whatever that looks like, and give yourself a lot of grace because you're gonna mess up a lot and you're gonna figure it out and it's gonna be okay. So if they're alive and breathing by the end of the day, you've done a great job. So congratulations on your newborn uh, coming up in April. It's gonna be good. What, how long have I been recording? Oh my heavens, this is gonna be the world's longest video. Sebastian asks, after all this time, can you finally call Ireland your home? 
I think so. I wish I knew the answer to that question. I think so. Certainly more than it did. Home for me is, is, home for me is more about people. Home for me is more about where I feel known. It's, it's less about the geographical place. And I feel more known here, I think, than I ever did in California. Uh, and that has to do with the people. So I think so. Good question. Think about that. Uh, Lisa asks, I've been watching your videos for some time. My first time commenting. I love how real they are. You and your family seem like a very kind and compassionate people. <laughs> oh, I mean, thank you. <laughs> Have you ever looked into veganism? Not just the animal cruelty aspect, but also the environmental impact and health aspect for humans. As a vegan, for about a year and a half now, I try to talk with people openly about it. It's hard to say anything without coming across as arrogant or pushing an agenda. Hey, I'm a Christian. I get that. It's hard to come off as calm and not judgmental when you care so much about something. Totally understand that. Uh, I have looked into veganism. I have looked into pescatarianism. I've looked into vegetarianism. And uh, long story short, I, I, it's, it's a lot about the energy level and the priority level of where I want to focus. I think that there are important aspects of that. Uh, but when I sit my child down with a meal and she, they won't eat, then the priority for me is to get them to eat. Uh, that doesn't negate the fact that maybe I'm, I'm missing something and there's, there's probably a lot of good there. Um, I've had a lot of vegan food and it's really good, except for maybe kale. I, I just don't know that that's been, that's not something that is the, a large priority in my life right now. It may be later, uh, might be later on, uh, but right now it's, uh, we have, there's less of an emphasis on, on, on what we're eating and more that the kids are eating. I know that's probably not a great answer for that, but, um, I, I acknowledge that there's probably more that I could know and there's probably no more that I could do. And I'm, I'm trying to find other ways to reduce my, my footprint and reduce our footprint. But yeah, good question. Uh, I don't think you're judgmental at all. <laughs> Flame Vectros 11 asks, would you rather your kids end up with American accents or Irish ones? Please, Irish, absolutely. Uh, they already, and they already kind of do, Ryland certainly does. Um, I've really enjoyed watching your vlogs, rel relaying you and your family's integration into Irish culture and society. Thank you. Your relaxed approach makes your vlogs enjoyable to watch. Thank you. Do you think you, do you still think and behave in American terms or are you slowly morphing into an Irish approach towards life? I think the majority of my mindset is American some of my actions are just necessarily more Irish just because that's you, when you move to a culture, they're just kind of doing their own thing and you have to kind of adapt to that. But uh, I, I still very much think in American terms, one of the things that is a, a very different uh, cult, there was a big cultural difference, like huge cultural shock type aspect of things when we first moved was how the perception, the t like perception of time being early and being late. In, in California, one of the things that was so annoying was there was a huge emphasis on being on time, but people were always kind of late, but we always shamed them for it. So there was like this, oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. And that was kind of expected because everybody was so busy and don't get me started. But I placed a high priority on being on time and there was a, a really high priority of being on time, if not early. I think that's a very, Generalized speaking, I think that's more of an American priority, like an American value. But in California, that was a very, that was a big value. Here, it's like you're early if you're 15 minutes late. And you're just kind of expected to kind of show up whenever. And, you know, if you've got a meeting, if you have to be on time for a thing, you'd be there on time. But if you're expecting people over at 6, they'll probably get there at like 6.30. And, and that's something that, you know, when we first arrived, we okay, we gotta get everything ready and the food's gonna be ready by, you know, we want it to be hot as soon as they walk through the door at six and then it would be 6.45 and they'd be like, yeah, we'll be there in about 10 minutes. Got out the door a little bit late and we'd just be like, well, the food's cold. And so we had to learn to adjust to that. So, uh, so but I still kind of, I feel like I, I mean, I've, I've had, when did we move over here? When I was 26? So 26 years of being an American, I don't think goes away very quickly. But I think the primary answer to that question is I think I still think in American terms for sure. Blah, 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 blah. Caitlin asks, I have a few Q. Why do you vlog? Because I like to make videos and I've been doing it for a few years now and that's just part of my week. What's your favorite thing you've done in Ireland? I don't know that there's one favorite thing. I like to travel around and see different places. Been up to Sleeve League, been to the Cliffs of Moher, uh, been up to Giant's Causeway, been to Roscommon, been down south, been to the Atlantic, been up down Belfast, been all over the place. Love doing that. So I don't know if there's a favorite place. Uh, do you think your kids changed in any way from moving? Yes. Well, 
I mean, they're still kind of grown up, so I don't know that it's change. So I don't know, they were both really young when we moved, so I don't know if it's much of a change as just that's what they're growing up in. Uh, what do you think of Irish society and Ireland as a whole? I think it's great. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that they're working on. I think that there's a lot of change happening right now. I think there's a lot of hurt in the past that is being, that we're seeing the kind of the other, the tipping point of a lot of its history uh, happening now, which is a very interesting cultural uh, pivot. I think we're seeing a lot of that now. And, uh, but I like it. I think the Irish people are cool. They're great. Ben asks, how do you hype yourself up on the days you need to talk to the camera and add to the story, but you're not really feeling it and you think everything you're doing is dumb and worthless? You pick up the camera and you do it anyway. That's, it's the same sort of thing as I was talking about earlier where you don't create when you feel inspired to create. You create because you have to. I just know every Sunday I have to have a video out. There, there, I just, I, that's, every Sunday I publish. I have to have a video, video done by midnight tonight. So at some point, I need to pick up the camera and literally say, hey, I don't have anything to talk about today. Hmm, I'm gonna walk around the house. And I've done that. I mean, if you've been watching this vlog for a long period of time, any period of time, there's been days where I'm just carried around going like, I don't know, today's Thursday, happy Thursday. And, and so you just, you make because you make, because it's part of what you do. So on the days where I don't feel hyped, I pick up the camera and I press record. Uh, other days where I don't, I, I just don't. I just leave it there and I know that it's, it's whatever. Um, but I always try to keep it handy because there's going to be a moment. There's there's always going to be moments where I'm like, ah, oh, man, I wish I would have filmed that. The whole point of vlogging is not to make a, an epic, compelling, you know, this is just the, oh, Hollywood. It's to make. You're making a vlog. Uh, so I would say even think about how, what it is, what it is that you, what is it that you want to make? Why is it that you want to vlog? Why are you, why do you have this idea that you want to make videos? And if it's to create this epic, compelling story that's super cinematic and has all this B-roll, uh, and that's not actually going to fit with what your life is like, then maybe change your expectations. For me, it's not about getting the recognition or having this epic whatever. It's about, I make a video every week and I'm sharing our journey. I'm sharing our story. And sometimes the story is boring. Sometimes the journey is boring. That's also your own opinion. Uh, that's another piece of feedback that I've received and, and now something that I, I say to people who are wanting to start a vlog all the time. You might think your story is boring, but there are billions of people out there who don't think your story is boring and they're gonna think it's interesting, which is weird, I know, but that's just the truth. Some people wanna sit here and watch this video of me sitting in front of my desk on this chair talking about stuff. It's weird. 831 Branding and asks, how do you keep work and business tasks from infiltrating your home life since you work from home? I have specific work hours and I keep work here in the office. So I have set contexts and zones. So I work in here. Sometimes I work from the couch, but it's not often. Um, but I keep work here and I have specific set in the calendar work hours. And that's synced to my boss. He knows my work hours. And, and so I know, okay, from this hour to this hour, I'm in work mode. When that's done, I do dinner and I go hang out with my family. So it's, it's creating strict, strict boundaries of when you start, when you stop, and the context that you work in. That is the most important part about working from home. A lot of people are like, oh, I'll work from my table, I'll work from my kitchen, I'll work from wherever. You need to have one specific place that you work. That needs to be the, so when you get in there, that's the place where you conduct your business, all of that, it needs to be in that, that one singular space. Uh, you might, I mean, it may, maybe it's, and it's, might be a little bit fluid if you want to sit on the couch sometimes, but having having set boundaries on work hours is really, really important as well. Nugget, Nugget asks, <laughs> Nugget, you're great. Why do you wear hats indoors? I've gotten this question so many times. My most watched video, I think it's my most watched video, or my second, is about the Apple Watch, and I'm wearing a hat, and I don't know, like 30% of the comments are like, don't even listen to this hipster, he's wearing a hat inside and oh, he's got a hat on or whatever. The reason I have a hat on, there, there's any, there's two reasons why I wear a hat inside at any given time. One, we try to keep the house not running with heat all the time in the winter because it's expensive to heat the house. And so it might actually be genuinely four degrees Celsius inside and I'm cold and I need to wear a beanie because it's cold. The, the second reason why I would wear a hat inside is, um, especially the, this last year, so when I was growing my hair out, and it's even, I might need to get it trimmed again, but there, there's a certain length where I just, 
dis I feel really insecure about how my hair looks or how it sits or if it's out or it's too long or it's whatever. I get really insecure about my hair. My hair is actually one of my favorite features about me and uh, as well as my beard. And so when it looks funky or weird or or it's it's just I don't like it, um, then I get really self-conscious about it and, and I feel I have a great insecurity about it. So I'll wear a hat because then that masks it or it lets it kind of sit down. And in a lot of cases that was, you know, if I have a hat on indoors in these videos, it's because it's one of those two things. Or number three, because I want to. So Ian asks, here's the final one. He says, congratulations on getting ready to upload your 200th episode, thank you. Uh, right now I'm having a tough time making time for family. I'm working two jobs right now to get caught up on bills and build up a savings again. No, it will only be for a season, but it's tough because I feel guilty that I'm not home much right now other than to sleep. I'm at a crossroads right now. So my question is, with everything you do, what are ways you can include your family in some of the work or hobbies that you have? Have you had seasons where you have seen them less of the less than you would like? Really good question. This is a tough question. And not, not because it's a tough question to answer, but because it is subjective, and two, because it, it hits home, you know? The, the, the greatest thing I would say is um, to look at what your priorities are and what you're making time for. And if the things that you're making time for are the things that you want to make time for, um, or if it's just a necessity at this time. Um, there have certainly been seasons and, and moments where I see my family less during the week, or um, you know, there have been launches, like course launches or site updates or things where I'm like, I, I have to work late every single night this week. I just have to work from 12 to 10. And maybe it's only for a week, but I communicate that to my family. And, and I make sure on the times that I'm with them that I'm 100% focused with them. Uh, I don't do that often, and I try not to do that ever, if at all. But there are other times where, where it's the, it, you have to work two jobs, right? Like I'm not gonna say that, oh, well, just work one job and you'll be fine. Uh, sometimes that's just the necessity of life. Um, but the most important part of all of that is that your family is on board. Um, I know that my wife and I can talk about anything. We can communicate, I check in, I see how she's doing, I make time throughout the day. Uh, we catch up in the mornings or in the nights. Like You have to have your family on board because if you're working your butt off your whole life and you never see your family but you're working so hard so that your family is like, I, I can't tell you how many stories of people who are like, yeah, my dad provided for us and I never saw him until I was at his funeral. You know, like that's, for me, I, I want to be involved in my kids' lives. I want to be involved in my family. I want, to be, I want to be the kind of dad who's present. And so I look at that foundationally as my priority and I say, how do I make everything else work around that? My wife is texting me saying that I'm taking too long. <laughs> so there you go. You're only going to feel guilty if you feel like what you're doing is wrong. And the only way that you determine if what you're doing is right or wrong is by communicating with the people that your work is affecting. Um, so, so that would be, so, f so for me, that's a, that's a, that's a high value is, is that I'm there in their lives and I'm present. Um, uh, I acknowledge that it's in a tough spot. Um, I don't really include my family in my work because I try to keep those things kind of separate. Um, uh, but I communicate about it. I talk about it you bring it up if it's relevant. Uh, but the most important part is when I'm with my family, I'm with them 100%. Phone goes over there. I don't check into work stuff. Uh, I don't check my email. Um, and, I'm, and again, I'm not perfect at all this stuff and you're not gonna be perfect at all this stuff either. It's doing your best to, to, to give as much of your focus when you're with your family, with your family and to set up boundaries for that and, and communicate to your employers or the people that you're working for that there are off hours. You need to have off hours. You absolutely need to have rest. You need to have time away from the stuff that you're working on and not even just for you, but also for the benefit of the work that you're doing. If you just sit there and you look at a problem for 72 hours, you're never gonna solve it. Having, giving your brain a break is, is huge as well. So um, Ian, I hope that helps. Talk, talk, communicate. Um, see what you can do to make your priorities a reality um, and give yourself some grace. Um, because if it's just for a season, it's just for a season and um, it'll be okay. And that, Primarily because my wife is texting me saying, come down, please stop being in your office. <laughs> but that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you have any additional questions, please, please don't hesitate to ask. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm really excited that 200 episodes in. And yeah, I'm, uh, it's, been a great, it's been a great journey. I, I like having done this. This is fun. It's good. Thanks to everybody who asked a question. If I didn't get to your question, I'm sorry. Ask it again and, uh, and I'll try to get to it. Uh, and next week, back for normal videos. That'd be great. So yeah, that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. I really, truly, honestly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I really do appreciate you. And uh, I'll see you next week. I don't know how to, it's on a stand right now. I usually do this thing where I like flip the camera down, but it's on a stand, so I'd have to like, like flick it down. So, all right.